for a couple of days ago on the beach, um, a collar on the dingo is a bit unusual. So, um, yeah, it had a device underneath its neck, quite a big collar as such. So it's quite noticeable, especially on a, a dingo. You don't often see collars on the dingoes. No, you don't. How did the animal look in terms of wearing this device? Well, sometimes their head's a bit low when they're wearing them. I've seen them before when they've been trialling them in previous years, um, quite a few years ago now. Yeah, sometimes the animals have things caught around their collars. They sometimes are trailing with vines and um, things are caught around them. So, you know, sometimes they don't, they don't have to be so good with the collars on. So you're assuming that this is some kind of tracking device? Well, I'm presuming it's probably something to do with GPS, maybe some sort of tracking device. So this is the only animal that you've seen wearing one of these on the island? spoken to people that have seen at least one dingo with one on and then another one apparently the tracking system hadn't worked so the rangers were off um, trying to locate the, the collar or the device so that's another two that have been sort of around that I've heard of. Lisa thanks for telling me what you know. Okay thank you. ABC Coast FM. So let's clarify what these devices are exactly with Andrea Leverington. She's the Assistant Director General with the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Services, which is part of DERM. Andrea, good morning. What are these devices exactly? Are they some kind of tracking device? Uh, yes, they, they are satellite tracking collars. Uh, and so what they're doing is tracking the dingoes and we're getting a fix on the position of the dingoes every two hours. In terms of the government's management program, what's the purpose? OK, well, what this will do is give us much better information about how far the dingoes are roaming, uh, what sort of locations they're going into. We think at the moment dingoes can travel up to 40 kilometres in one day. What this will also do is help us identify where some of the female den sites are and we'll be able to try and help manage our dingo population once we know that type of information. I work as a guide on Fraser, also on Cape York and other areas, and I do come across dingoes on a regular basis, but especially the ones on Fraser. Mm -hmm. and I'm taking people up there on a weekly basis, and uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was um, on a tour up there with a group of people, and we spotted a dingo on the beach, which is nothing unusual for us. And uh, lo and behold, it had a huge chunky collar on. And uh, I've seen radio collars before um, on dingoes, and... Uh, this one was rather large and, as you mentioned, with the battery packs and so on and the antennas being more than one, I thought, wow, this is uh, certainly uh, looks very uncomfortable. And the way the dingo was holding its head was fairly low and it was sort of moving along fairly slowly and it just looked like it had, was being restricted, its movements were being inhibited. Now, they do look quite uncomfortable to me, Andrea, from the photographs I've seen. Uh, the dingo in the photo that uh, we've got uh, appears to have its head bowed down. It's got a, a, a large, what looks like a battery pack sitting underneath its jaw and uh, two antenna that I can see poking out on either side of the animal's head. How much do you think these collars will inhibit the animal's normal hunting practices and its activities generally? The collars are less than 5% of the, the body weight of a dingo. So, for example, if you were a 60 kilo woman, it would be less than, than 3 kilos. This is best practice wildlife management that we're using. Uh, we've got ethics approval for this work, so we've been very thorough in ensuring that it's, it's not going to harm the dingoes. Do you believe it will allow the animals to interact normally with... Uh, other dingoes and other species that they might be hunting, for example, on the island? If they can't do that, you know, the study is, 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 isn't terribly useful, so it's important that they're able to undertake those sorts of activities. You know, the study is, 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 isn't terribly useful. Is, isn't terribly we'd useful. Uh, get the perspective now of uh, Malcolm Kilpatrick. He's the president of Save the Fraser Island Dingoes Incorporated. Malcolm, thanks for having a chat this morning. Oh, thanks very much for talking to us, Annie. Now, I know that uh, you're aware of these collars. Uh, overall, you've probably seen photographs like I have, and we've certainly posted some on our Facebook page this morning. Facebook.com forward slash ABC Sunshine Coast is the place to go. What's your impression of the, uh, the comfort level of these collars on the dingo on Fraser? Well, they're, look, they're pretty confronting for a start, uh, even from the, the contact we've had on our uh, Facebook and web page so already from uh, tourists even just saying, whoa, what is that? You know, it's a, a fairly big device. We were, we knew that uh, Dermot said at a meeting we had early April that they were looking at uh, devices for this. We didn't know that they were in this stage at the moment of actually putting them on and that the device would be as big uh, and cumbersome as it is and fairly similar to devices they were using before and uh, unfortunately with the ones that they were using before Annie they, they would
were quite a, a tangled problem for the poor animals. Uh, quite a few reports of uh, all the uh, under brush and scrub. Uh, you know, see dingoes walking around with uh, parts of trees and all that sort of thing. Mm. And, uh, that around, we, we really wonder with the amount of uh, you know, there's two aerials there now. The other ones they used to have only had one aerial, and they were getting tangled. So, uh, if they believe that you know these uh, little devices will be better, I. I really hope that they're, they're right but I can't see it because they're chasing animals you know if their uh, prey is uh, down at ground level where it is they're going through the underbrush after them um, it's got to be a, a problem and what if it's uh, you know are we putting them on uh, you know mums to be and all that sort of thing so that means they're going to go into the natal den with these things wrapped around their uh, neck as well now apparently 10 uh, adults have been fitted with the uh, devices so far so the, the mix that andrea leverington spoke about from germ was 10 they're looking for 10 adults and 10 sub juveniles to fit these devices too but one thing she did mention in response to my query about whether vines or other bush vegetation could become caught up and entangled in the collars was that there is a quick unlock device that can be activated remotely uh, on these satellite collars uh, to free the animal from the collar straight away. What's your impression of that? Isn't, isn't that, uh, you know, a, a good thing? Yeah, it's great. What does the dingo do? Dial triple O or something like that? You know, when it's in distress, uh, how do they know it's it's got a problem? You know, this is one of the things uh, ethics committees wise and all that. We wonder if they've investigated with the, uh, the, the people who are doing the, the study for them is are the animals monitored 24 hours a day because these things are on them 24 hours a day and, uh, you know, it's, it's something that if they do get caught or uh, if there's a problem, uh, how do they know that there's a stress level involved? You know, there would have been a stress level involved the moment those things were clamped around their neck, I would imagine. So immediately it should have probably dropped off their neck before they left the cage or where it was that they trapped them. So, Malcolm, you've heard there what Andrea has to say about the weight of the device. Does that allay your concerns at all? Oh, not very much. Uh, if it was a, a equivalent to a, a 60 kilo person with three, nearly three kilos around his neck, I'm sure if you had a necklace wrapped around your neck for the night, if you went out on the town or something like that, uh, by the end of the evening, your, your neck would be feeling pretty bad now. You know, this, that's akin to... Uh, you know, six tubs of, or, you know, of of butter wrapped around your neck for 24 hours a day for however many months this is going to go on for. So, you know, uh, their ethics committee, if they said that that's a, a, an OK thing to do, I, I would probably question that, actually, as to uh, the amount of weight and, and for best practice. You know, we have other countries in the world, and you know, look, even for pedophiles, we have them with a clip band around their uh, ankle, um, Gosh, you know, in this electronic day and age there with cameras that have got all the little switch devices on them and, and GPS plotters that tell you where the picture's been taken and all that, it's in a device that only weighs, you know, a, a 100 grams or something like that. You know, and, uh, I don't see how that can be best practice if it's if it's akin to a three kilo on a 60 uh, kilo uh, person. Uh, no, I, I, you'd have to convince me otherwise in another matter, I'm afraid, Annie. I understand that uh, your organisation also has concerns about the fact that these devices are going to be fitted to sub-juvenile dingoes who are, you know, potentially, you would think, continuing to grow throughout the eight-month trial that they'd be wearing these devices. What are your concerns there? Well, you've, you've just said it in a nutshell. I think uh, because the animal is sub-adult, it's still growing. Uh, and I believe that uh, most people, uh, you know, would be, uh, that were interested in animal welfare would say to you, look, if you, you're putting a, a half kilo device around a, a young adult and it's going to be wrapped around their neck, what is it going to do to their growing muscles? You know, how tight is the thing and, and you know, how does how do we know how it's in distress or how will this uh, animal be uh, you know, released straight away? You know, is there, if it's a satellite control or is it controlled by rangers at ground level who are monitoring the animals uh, daily and all that? Is there somebody on the team whose specific job it is to keep an eye on the, the 20 of these animals? And we're talking the whole of the island now. That's, that's the whole of 90 miles of Fraser Island. So how do you get around to, to 20 of them? You know, we, we hope that that's all been worked out and thought out uh, uh, as to best practice as well. But the bottom line here is, is something as monstrous as this. Uh, you know, for we don't know if it's eight months. Is that the period that they've uh, said that they will be doing? Yes, it is an eight-month trial. You know, well, that's, that's a, a fairly lengthy time. And, uh, you know, 
something that's unobtrusive. We've known that the animals before have chewed the antennas off, uh, your partners have knocked them off, they've chewed the collars off, and, you know, um, it's it's something that we would have been looking for, something a little bit less intrusive into their life. Uh, you know, animals have been ostracised in their groups because they've been wearing the things, you know. It's, um, it's something that, you know, uh, before it, it hasn't changed. All I'm saying is in past performance, there have been problems with it, and you'd think that they would go to something a little bit different when they know that before there were problems. So, mm. Malcolm Kilpatrick, thanks for sharing your perspective this morning. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Andy, for your time. Malcolm Kilpatrick is the president of Save the Fraser Island Dingoes Incorporated. It's 14 past nine. This is ABC Coast FM, and you're listening to us on 90.3 and 95.3 on the Sunshine and Kalula Coast. Andrea, we're hearing that uh, the animals that are trapped for tagging and collaring purposes uh, are, are trapped using some kind of a leg trap. Can you describe these leg traps for us? OK, they, these are called uh, soft jaw leg hold traps uh, and you can actually put your hand in them. So if you were to go and have a trial on them, you could stick your hand in and put it, get it caught on your wrist and see for yourself that it actually doesn't hurt. How humane are they? I know you've said there that they're soft and that you could put your hand in it without injury, but anecdotally, we are hearing from uh, some people living on Fraser Island that dingoes have had their legs broken because of these traps. Uh, look, they wouldn't have had the legs broken from the traps. There are a number of other issues that the injuries that are occurring like that uh, will be from natural causes rather than from the leg traps. Uh, now, of course, you know Jennifer was the subject of an Australian story earlier this year. And uh, that related to the time that she spent visiting Fraser Island over many, many years as a, a wildlife photographer. She is now the vice president of the Save the Fraser Island Dingo Incorporated organisation. And uh, look, she didn't want to uh, reply or respond uh, on air this morning to these comments, but she has posted a comment on our Facebook page. And uh, she says, Save the Fraser Island Dingoes have asked Derm for a complete moratorium on any interference with the dingoes. This is more interference, not less. Dern promised to show us the collars during our meeting with them prior to Easter, but it never happened and now we can see why. Apart from animal welfare ethics, do we really want our tourists to see wild, in inverted commas, dingoes wearing collars? So they do look quite bulky, don't they? Just according to the pics we've got up there. Yeah, when you showed me yesterday, I thought, yeah, they look um, uncomfortable. But, you know, it's hard to tell what a dog would feel, but they do look quite bulky. I used to have a dog, uh, and we had a barking a collar, which had a little um, box underneath to stop, you know, the, the dog would get a small shock to stop mm -hmm. the barking, and it would teach it. But it didn't have that great big antenna out of it, and it was, it was a lot smaller than that tracking device seems to be. Lang writes, uh, I weigh 94 kilos, and my semi-laptop weighs about seven. If I had to carry that weight around my neck 24-7 for eight months, I think I'd be looking to kill someone. If the average dingo weighs 21 kilos, the animals are being expected to uh, carry 4.5 times more weight in proportion to their size than my laptop. That amounts to the equivalent of 13.5 kilograms around the poor bloody animal's neck. How about we hang that weight around the neck of the cruel drongo who came up with the idea at the, for the same time. I agree with tracking and taking stock of the dingoes, but not at that weight. Where did they get the device from a clearance sale of 1980s stock?